is itching to go bikepacking for a while now. There's something about, you know, living off your bike, carrying everything with you that you need to survive, traveling in remote areas. It just excites me, man. But we're definitely not serious cyclists. You know, we haven't really even done any training for it. I guess it's gonna be hard. I'm not sure what to expect. I am so unfit. There's only one cure for itching. So that's my oldest mate, Bean. And I'm done. Got three days riding ahead of us. Uh, starting off in a small town on the English-Welsh border called Knighton. Oh man, it was like a ghost town. We were literally the only ones there. Let's do it then. So we're about 20 minutes in and we're already pushing up the steepest hill I've ever walked through in my life. And this is still tarmac as well. Pretty much straight away, Bean had been having trouble with his gears on his bike. Bean's bike won't go into first gear, so he's trying to fix it. But this is the uh, this is the funny part. He doesn't have a clue what he's doing. He's just looking at it and pressing the button. <laughs> Seven fifteen in the evening. We're about three miles from Raya Dare, I think it is, or something like that. I don't know how you pronounce it. That's our stopping point for tonight. Looking forward to a pint and a, and a steak meal, I think. 75 miles to go, fuck, it's looking good. The next day we set off really early because we knew we had a long day ahead of us. But Bean's gears were getting worse. By well, pure luck, just as we were leaving the town, we rode past the little bicycle shop where the owner, Neil, said he'd look at Bean's bike for us. Thanks, Neil, appreciate it. So, the legend that is Neil from the bike shop has managed to fix Bean's bike. Um, he's got gears now, which is good, but it's really et into our time. We lost like two hours there. It's almost 11 o'clock now. So I think we're definitely going to be wild camping in the valley tonight. We're just about to hit Elam Valley Trail, which is meant to be very scenic, very remote. Lots of lakes, I think. Turning left up here, no, not this one. And, uh, and once we're in there, we're not going to see many people. We stopped for a little lunch break on the trail. And set off. Um, <laughs> do you want to go first? Go on. Okay. I could tell Bean was starting to lose his temper a little bit with the mud. It didn't help that I was there shoving a camera in his face every five minutes. So after what felt like literally forever, we finally approached the massive Clarwyn Dam. 
For the next section, we had hours and hours of fairly easy riding, but we were pretty far away from any kind of civilization. And as the evening drew closer, we were starting to realize we were running out of water and supplies. Oh, it's getting quite late now. Every mile is fucking hard work, man. We're both aching. And it looks like we're gonna have to try and hunker down in, in the valley somewhere, because we're still, can't see any sign of life. Seems like no signal on our phones. It feels like we're miles away from anything. So, looks like it's porridge for tea tonight. And then, just as we were considering to pitch up our tents in the valley, our phones started beeping like crazy. It was the first time we'd had phone signal in about seven hours. And to top it off, we were only three miles away from a campsite. I honestly don't know where we got the energy from, but that was the fastest we'd cycled all day. Oh yes. So we quickly pitched up, had a shower, and went to the pub next door for a well-deserved pint. Some hot food and mingled with the locals. There was something bothering us in the back of our minds. But that was a problem for tomorrow. Right, so here's the issue. We're not even halfway through our planned route and our train's booked home tomorrow morning. We need to somehow change course to get to the line our train will be on so we can get back to our van in Shrewsbury. Luckily, a fellow bike packer overheard us talking and came to our rescue. My mum lives not far from Knighton. Yeah. And, I, and I've been bike packing for a few years. Nice, yeah. <laughs> this, is our, this is our first one, so... Is this, I, mean, I, yeah, know, so I didn't know what you are doing. So this trail goes on the old railway line, basically. Oh, okay, cool. And so this is an absolutely beautiful, all laid out, yeah. straight as straight as a die. Yeah. And then, um, and it's well signed actually that end, and you end up coming around the harbour into our boat. Oh, that's perfect. That that's around. perfect. Yes, yeah, beauty. So she mentioned of an old rail track that was now part of the national cycling route, and led us straight into Aberystwyth. It was as if the planets had aligned for three reasons. Firstly, our original train started its journey from Aberystwyth, so we could just jump on board earlier down the line. Second, it took us right to the coast, meaning we would have cycled the whole length of Wales, east to west, giving the trip some kind of purpose. And lastly, it was a fairly easy route, and our fat old dad bods were taking a right beating from the last few days of riding. What you gonna do, Katie? You're a sweet, sweet girl But it's a cruel, cruel world A cruel, cruel world But things are none too strong We took a wrong turn and somehow ended up in the Amazon I can feel it going down and it won't take none too long But since you said goodbye The polka dots fill my eyes And I don't know why now we've made it onto the old rail track. We were expecting literally to be riding on like an old railway, but it's all been tarmacked or gravel packed or something. <laughs> but this is uh, pretty straightforward now into Aberystwyth, not far off the end. It's absolutely beautiful today. We've got nice easy trails. Just on the National Cycle route. Coming up, to, coming up towards the end now. And we're about less than an hour away from the coast. I can't believe we've cycled through a whole country. Pretty cool, man. I feel proud of us, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you cover good ground when you're travelling by bike. And you can get to places that are inaccessible to any other form of transport. But at the same time, you're going slow enough to really take in everything around you. And it feels rewarding knowing we did it under our own manpower. To do it with my best mate of over 25 years made it a trip I'll never forget. But let's do some proper training for the next one, eh, mate? Cheers. <laughs>